scriptures say that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Light is not just a possession that God owns, it is his character. God is light, like God is love. So Jesus is the only begotten of the Father and came from the bosom of the Father. And so we should find it reasonable that in him was life and the life was the light of men. He came forth from God, who is light, and so Jesus, is, his life is light. Now this table has everything to do with Jesus. There's nothing about this table that highlights anyone else but Jesus or anything other than Jesus. It's, it's exclusive to him. Men build to, to maximize investment. They build things like multipurpose buildings. This is not a multipurpose table. It's only about him. It's only for him. It only has to do with him. And if there's anything else done or thought at, of at this table, then there's consequences to it. And Paul identified it as that they didn't discern the Lord's body because this table has everything to do with him and nothing to do with anything else. I know people have taught that we should remember one another at this table, that we should think about our sin at this table. This is... It, it, do this in remembrance of me. That's what he said. And so I want, I want to uh, be a helper in, in, uh, in helping you to think about him of being light. In him was life, and the life was the, was the light of men. So all, all real illumination among men comes from Jesus, from his life. Now it's not, it's not, it's not, it's that the life, the light comes from him. It's not that he was our example. I know that's a kind of a popular teaching, but it's not that we see what he did and so now we know what we ought to do. There's a great, greater revelation than just an example. John 12, 46 says, I am come a light into the world. Singular. Not one of many. He has come a light into the world. Ephesians 5.14 says, Arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. It can't come from anywhere else. The first divine words that we have recorded, let there be light, and there was light. And it's like God said it again when Christ came into the world. Let there be light, and there was light. So arise from the dead, and, and Christ shall, shall give thee light. See, we're to, coming, coming to this table is remembering him. And you don't, we can't remember anything without light. Remembering has to do with meditation and discernment, understanding, knowledge, apprehension. And none of that, you, you don't get any traction in any of that without light. But when, when there's light, now you, 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 start, you can make some progress. You, can, you start coming up to speed. Your, your mind becomes productive you get um, you get you start to get traction in your heart and in your in your mind and in your spirit when there's light Amen. first John 2 verse 8 says the darkness is past and the true light now shines so when when we are illuminated when when you see and when you understand something that you you hadn't seen before, it's that the true light shine. That's what it did. It, it's, it's not, you don't just stumble over something. The true light shined it, shined on it. Christ gave you light. That's why you, that's why you saw it. <clears throat> he hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Life really doesn't make sense without the gospel. Immortality is just, it's, it's, it's outside of man's uh, grasp without the gospel. But, but the gospel has, has brought life and immortality to light. The people, are, people really are confused about life. They, uh, you know that age-old question comes to mind. What's, what's the meaning of life? Well, that, that's not just 
um, that's not just an old adage. People really do want to know the meaning of life, and the gospel brings it to light. It's about giving an account to God. It's about being made acceptable to God. See, the, the gospel's brought it, brought it to light. Brought, in not, not just in this world, it's brought immortality to light. But this is, Jesus, Jesus is the custodian of light. His life is the light of men. When people rise from the dead out of baptism, Christ gives them light. In fact, uh, Paul at least, was it two times or three? Two times at least in, uh, when he gave his defense to the politicians, he gave that account of the Damascus Road and he said, a great light shone round about me. What, what, he was talking about Jesus. When Jesus confronted him, it was an experience of enlightenment. That's what happens. And even in the world to come, think, think about it this way. I, uh, think about th this table as a, a particular, um, very, very specific preparation for the world to come. We're remembering Christ, discerning, uh, discerning Him. And in the world to come, Revelation 21, 23, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And so the more we see, the more we comprehend, the more familiar we become, the more we partake of him, then the more prepared we are for the world to come. Because the, he'll, be, he'll be the only light there. Well, fact is, he's the only light here too. But he'll be apparent there. It'll be obvious there because God will show him the only, the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Right now, he's, he, he's only made known to, to those people that to whom God draws. Draw, God draws men to Christ. But there he's gonna God's gonna show him. And so the more we remember Christ here, the more prepared we'll be to enter in there. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this table. And we pray that you would give us uh, strength of heart and strength of mind as we come to it uh, to discern the Lord's body. And we are grateful that Christ has shined uh, in our hearts and given us light. And we pray that we would continue to walk in that light. In Jesus' name, amen.